The revolts of the Sicilian slaves against their Roman masters, also known as the Servile Wars, were significant events in the history of the Roman Republic. These uprisings, which took place in the late 2nd century BCE, were driven by the harsh conditions and brutal treatment that slaves endured under Roman rule. The two major revolts in Sicily, often referred to as the First and Second Servile Wars, exposed the vulnerabilities of the Roman slave-based economy and highlighted the potential for widespread social unrest. Slavery was an integral part of the Roman economy and society. The Roman Republic, particularly during its expansion in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE, relied heavily on the labor of enslaved people. Slaves were typically captured during military campaigns and were often from conquered territories. These individuals were then sold in slave markets and put to work in various sectors, including agriculture, mining, domestic service, and construction. In Sicily, a wealthy province known for its fertile land and large agricultural estates, Latifundia, the demand for slave labor was particularly high. Roman landowners in Sicily exploited slaves to maximize their profits, often subjecting them to brutal working conditions, inadequate food, and harsh punishments. The large number of slaves in Sicily, combined with their maltreatment, created a volatile situation ripe for rebellion. The First Servile War was the earliest large-scale slave uprising in Sicily and one of the most significant in Roman history. It was led by Eunice, a slave of Syrian origin, who claimed to have prophetic visions and powers granted by the gods. The immediate cause of the revolt was the extreme cruelty and harsh treatment that the slaves endured. Roman landowners and overseers in Sicily were notorious for their brutality. Slaves were often worked to death, starved, and punished severely for even minor infractions. The discontent among the slave population reached a breaking point in 135 BCE, when a group of slaves, unable to endure the oppression any longer, decided to rise up against their masters. Eunice, who had gained a reputation among the slaves for his supposed magical abilities and prophetic visions, emerged as the leader of the rebellion. He reportedly claimed to receive divine messages instructing him to lead the slaves to freedom. His charisma and the slaves' desperation made him a natural leader for the revolt. The revolt began in the city of Enna, where Eunice and his followers attacked their Roman masters, killing many of them and seizing weapons. The rebellion quickly spread across the island, with thousands of slaves joining the cause. As the rebellion grew, Eunice declared himself king, adopting the name Antiochus and establishing a rudimentary government with his followers. The rebels achieved several early victories against Roman forces, which were initially caught off guard by the scale and ferocity of the uprising. The Roman Senate eventually dispatched a series of military commanders to suppress the revolt, but the rebels, numbering in the tens of thousands, proved difficult to defeat. The war dragged on for several years, with both sides suffering heavy losses. The turning point came when the Roman general Publius Rupilius was appointed to quell the rebellion. Rupilius implemented a strategy of systematically besieging and capturing the rebel-held cities, cutting off their supplies and isolating them from each other. The Romans eventually retook Enna, the center of the rebellion, and captured Eunice, who was later executed. The remaining rebels were either killed or re-enslaved, and the revolt was finally crushed in 132 BCE. The First Servile War exposed the fragility of the Roman slave system and highlighted the dangers of relying on a large, oppressed population for economic productivity. Although the revolt was ultimately suppressed, it left a lasting impact on the Roman psyche and influenced future slave policies. In the aftermath of the revolt, the Roman authorities sought to prevent similar uprisings by implementing stricter controls over the slave population. However, 
the underlying causes of discontent, harsh treatment, exploitation, and the vast disparity between masters and slaves remained largely unaddressed, setting the stage for future rebellions. The Second Servile War occurred a few decades after the First Servile War, and was, in many ways, a continuation of the same social and economic tensions that had sparked the earlier uprising. This revolt was led by two slaves named Salvius and Athenian, who became prominent figures in the struggle against Roman domination. The causes of the Second Servile War were similar to those of the First, widespread mistreatment of slaves, economic exploitation, and the harsh conditions on the large estates of Sicily. The revolt was also influenced by external factors, such as the instability within the Roman Republic during this period, which included political corruption, military challenges, and social unrest. The immediate trigger for the revolt was the decision by the Roman governor of Sicily, Publius Licinius Nerva, to free some slaves in response to growing unrest. However, this action was seen as inadequate and inconsistent, as it was not applied universally and did not address the grievances of the broader slave population. The discontented slaves, inspired by the memory of the First Servile War, decided to take matters into their own hands. The Second Servile War began in 104 BCE, when a slave named Salvius led a revolt in the central part of Sicily. Salvius, like Eunice before him, declared himself king, adopting the title of Tryphon, after the Hellenistic ruler Diodotus Tryphon. He quickly gathered a large force of slaves and captured several cities, establishing a base of operations in the mountainous regions of the island. Athenian, another slave leader, soon joined forces with Salvius. Athenian, who had been a slave overseer and was known for his military skills, became a key commander in the rebel army. Together, Salvius and Athenian led the rebels in a series of battles against the Roman forces sent to suppress the uprising. The Roman Senate, alarmed by the scale of the revolt, sent the consul Manius Aquilius to Sicily with a large army. Aquilius adopted a similar strategy to that of Publius Rupilius during the First Servile War, focusing on besieging the rebel strongholds and cutting off their supplies. Despite their initial successes, the rebels were eventually outmatched by the better equipped and more organized Roman forces. Salvius died during the conflict, and Athenian took over as the sole leader of the rebellion. However, the Roman military pressure proved too great, and the revolt was gradually crushed. Athenian was killed in battle, and the remaining rebels were either executed or re-enslaved. The Second Servile War officially ended in 100 BCE. The Second Servile War, like the First, highlighted the deep social and economic divisions within the Roman Republic. The rebellion underscored the dangers inherent in the Roman reliance on slave labor and the potential for large-scale uprisings among the oppressed population. In response to the revolt, the Roman authorities implemented more stringent measures to control the slave population and prevent future rebellions. However, these measures did little to address the underlying causes of discontent. The Roman elite remained largely indifferent to the plight of the slaves, viewing them as property rather than human beings with rights and grievances. The Second Servile War also contributed to the growing instability within the Roman Republic during the late second and early first centuries BCE. The social and economic tensions that fueled the slave revolts were part of a broader pattern of unrest that eventually led to the decline of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. The Sicilian slave revolts were among the most significant slave uprisings in the history of the Roman Republic. Although they were ultimately unsuccessful in overthrowing the Roman masters or achieving lasting freedom, these revolts left a profound impact on Roman society. The revolts revealed the inherent contradictions and vulnerabilities of the Roman slave system, which depended on the exploitation and subjugation of a large population of enslaved people.
the fear of future uprisings influenced Roman policy and military strategy, leading to a greater emphasis on controlling and suppressing slave populations. The legacy of the Sicilian slave revolts also extended beyond their immediate impact. The stories of resistance and rebellion by enslaved people in Sicily became part of the broader narrative of the struggle for freedom and justice in the ancient world. These revolts served as a reminder of the resilience and courage of those who fought against oppression, even in the face of overwhelming odds. In later centuries, the memory of the Sicilian slave revolts would be invoked by writers, historians, and social reformers as examples of the enduring human desire for freedom and the dangers of unchecked power and exploitation. The revolts stand as a testament to the capacity for resistance among the oppressed and the importance of addressing social and economic inequalities in any society. The revolts of the Sicilian slaves against their Roman masters were pivotal events in the history of the Roman Republic. These uprisings, driven by the brutal conditions and systemic exploitation of the Roman slave system, exposed the vulnerabilities of a society that relied on the subjugation of others for its prosperity. While the revolts were ultimately suppressed, their legacy continues to resonate as a powerful example of the struggle for freedom and the enduring human spirit in the face of oppression.